If you haven't already heard of Open Router, it's a really cool concept. Basically, instead of subscribing to all of these separate subscription services for AI access, what you can do is access any AI model from one chat interface and use their APIs so you're not paying for the subscriptions. So you can actually use Gemini 2.5 and then Claude 3.7 just right next to each other in the Satan chat interface and even switch between them or use auto routing to send the best type of or the question to the best type of model for that question. It's a really cool concept. Concept. There's one problem, the execution. I don't like their chat interface. I find it lacking, I find it buggy, and there's just a lot of things that I wish it would do, which it doesn't. So I made my own interface to connect with Open Router. Let me show you that. It's simple, it doesn't have a lot of clutter, and it does exactly what I need it to do, plus more. So let me show you what I built with Open Router, and you can see for yourself why it's a really useful way to access Open Router. So we've got the API key, which is locally stored to connect to open router so you just paste it in here I'll paste mine no looksies okay save and continue so this is locally stored in your browser storage it won't go anywhere and allows you to access open router so I'm gonna select the model that I want to chat with and then I'm gonna paste a message and here's one of the quality of life features I've put in so let's say I want to optimize a recipe make just give me the ingredients needed for this recipe and I have a big, let's get a lasagna recipe, okay? I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, okay? I don't wanna read this person's life story, right? So I'm just gonna paste it in here. What I love is I've added this attachment system, so when I paste anything over 300 characters, it will create it as an attachment, uh, which just means it's gonna be separate from the message box. So I'm just gonna call this recipe. You don't even have to name it, but you can if you want to. I could paste in multiple recipes and they'd show up beside each other like this. This is just a much easier interface, especially if you're doing a lot of coding and like pasting outputs from APIs or like doing N8N nodes and customization. Having it separate from your chat view is a really nice quality of life feature. So we'll go ahead and send that. So this is connecting directly to Open Router's API and it will get me a response. You notice that it also summarized the name for of this conversation and put it in here. That is just calling Open Router again using uh, GPT 4.1 Mini to come up with a name for the conversation. And you can create new conversations, there's threading and all of that. Now I'm gonna show you how to get this app for yourself and use it. I'm gonna show you how to change it to meet your needs. And I'm gonna talk about a tool called Zite that allows you to create apps like this and make it really easy to customize it. So if you've heard of Lovable and tools like that, you know, AI, vibe coding, whatever you want to call it, they allow you to create apps incredibly quickly. Now, I'm not going to claim that you can make production ready, scalable apps on these tools, but they're really great for internal tools or quick MVPs, whatever it is, and you can export the code and then use it to create a more production level code or app later. Now, Zite is the newest one on the market, and I really like it because it has a great combination of being able to take your instructions and run with them uh, very, very easily. It creates what you want. It adheres to your prompt really well, and it has built-in integrations with things like Google Sheets, Airtable, and Fillout, OpenAI, and they're coming out with new integrations so you can use these tools and integrate them with your app really quickly. What's really exciting is they just released, as of today that I'm recording this video, they released the ability to share templates with each other. So I created this app, now I saved it as a template and you can access it for free, you can clone it, you can make your own. And so that's a really cool feature that allows me to create apps and then share them with you. Okay, so. I want to add a new feature to this. I want this to have a prompt library that I can create myself, and then I want variables in the prompt so that I can reuse them really easily. So let's say I want to do this whole process for a bunch of recipes. What I'll do is we're going to add this prompt library and I'll show it to you. So I already built out a prompt for this and uh, it's really simple. I'm just saying under the chat message box, I want to have a drop down to select safe prompts. There needs to be a way to create them. I need to be able to edit the text, add double braces for variables and the variable should be put into the text. Okay, so we're going to hit generate. It's going to plan the changes, it's going to iterate through that and create it for us. And while that's working, I'll talk through a couple other things. So uh, Zeit currently does not build backends for you unless you're integrating with one of the 
the tools that it is already integrated with. So if you want to do something like connect to Open Router's API, you need to explain to Zite how to do that. So you just need to go to their documentation and just copy bits of the documentation and tell it how to use it. And it is pretty intelligent. It just needs to know what is the API call it needs to do and what is the schema of the response. Without that information, it's gonna get lost and it tends to hallucinate and ask, act as if it has enough information when it doesn't. So you just need to be careful to provide it both the input and the output, explain any nuances, usually just copy pasting the documentation is enough. If you get stuck with that, you can always go into the code, which you can't view while it's currently processing, but you can go into the code, you can copy what it wrote, and you can send it to another chatbot as well, and just have it make iterations on it. Um, so one of the things that I added was the ability to send files. So all I needed to do was go in here under images and PDFs, and I said, okay, for locally stored images, you send them this way. I grabbed the TypeScript, copied it, and said, I want to be able to send images. This is how you do it, and it added that feature seamlessly. I can go ahead and show you an example of that. Describe this image. So I can drag files in here, I can select them, and it sends the image, and it works seamlessly. So adding customizations is, is really, really simple. Okay, so I don't know if it's gonna receive the response because it just, oh, it did, okay, we're good. All right, so it added saved prompts. There's new prompt, okay? So we're gonna call this recipe sanitizer and we're gonna put in prompt here, list just the ingredients and the steps for this recipe under markdown sections under steps make sure to list the quantities for each ingredient so that I know how much to use as I follow the steps. This is a pet peeve of mine. Sometimes recipes do not actually uh, mention the quantities in the steps. So you have to go back to your like quantity list and then it's just a mess, right? Okay, so I've added this variable for recipe content and we'll hit save. Okay, let's go ahead and do a new conversation under save prompts, choose recipe sanitizer. Okay, we've got a variable that I can fill in. We're gonna copy this again. We're gonna do a lazy control all, includes a lot of junk. And let's see, let's see how that does. I did notice that it didn't include the XML, so it's not working properly. Let's see what is going on here. Okay, so we'll let that run. Let me just try one more time with a smaller bit of text. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I confused it. I'm gonna do recipe sanitizer. In the meantime, you can get your copy of this from over here. I'll put this link in the description. You can, as soon as you get connected with the site, you can go in here, you can clone this, and you can use it yourself. Now, right now, Zite is by waitlist only, but I know for a fact that they are working on eliminating that requirement and letting everyone in who wants to use it. So that should be coming down the pipeline. In the meantime, you should be able to get connected just by going on LinkedIn and messaging Dominic White, the, the founder. He's been pretty responsive with sending direct invites to people who message him. So you will probably have some luck doing that. But really, I think it's an incredible tool. I'm excited for what they're building in the future. They've shared that they're working on a super base slash post Progress integration. They're also working on an integration with Amazon S3, which means that you could have like file uploads and saving. That's really great. Okay, so we're gonna hit, this is still like, still not working the way I want. So if I switch between them, it works, but okay. The XML worked this time. Let's see if the response comes through. Okay, I'm noticing the XML tags might have sent the first time. I just didn't see them. This time it worked. I've got test save prompts. This part is working. So once I have more than one, it works. I'll just say one more thing, which is there's currently no way to bring up the prompt options and insert into the message box if you've already selected that saved prompt. It needs to be a button to pull it up. It's kind of hard to describe, so I'm hoping that it understands what I mean there. If you want to use Zite to create your own apps, I recommend you check out the video where I dive deep into Zite and its features and how it works. I talk about some of the pitfalls that you'll run into and how to avoid those and how to really understand the infrastructure around Zite so that you know what it's capable of and what it's not. That will really help you when you're doing your Zite journey and trying to build apps. 
I did a lot of testing and tried to break as many things as possible to see how it works on the back end. So I'd recommend you check that out in the suggested video section and I'll have the link in the description as well. I'm also going to be creating weekly YouTube content for businesses that want to get ROI out of automations, AI, and app building. All right, let's see how this handles uh, save prompts now. Okay, so yeah, you can hit variables and it'll, it'll use that prompt again. All right, that is great. At any point, I can just hit publish. That'll publish it to the template. That'll publish it to myself as well. So when I open up that link, I can use it. I can send it to other people. So this is a really great great way to make a quick shareable app. In case you're wondering about Zite and pricing, my understanding is you can take this absolutely for free. If you're able to get access to Zite, which is currently on waitlist only, you will be able to use the template for free and you just can't have it on a custom domain and it's gonna have Zite branding on it. Uh, there's a couple other uh, limitations like that. But if you check out their billing, they have a free plan They've got a starter plan, which I'm on, and then they've got pro and business. I have not needed anything past starter. Even starter, I don't really need, but when I was first using it, I was sending a lot of messages. So they do limit the amount of messages you can send, but honestly, the limit is pretty high if you're not just spending all day doing this. So it's really quite generous right now, especially since they're launching. I expect it to get less generous over time because I, I know that there must be bleeding money just to get it promoted, but even at the higher pricing, I think it's well worth it. I've built like 10 different apps on my current plan. Thanks so much for tuning in and make sure to subscribe if you want content focused around using technology to improve ROI and efficiency in your business. I'm going to be talking about AI agents, automation, app building, all of that, but with a particular focus on how do you get actual results from them and not just big workflows that look cool, but don't actually work for your business. So subscribe if you're interested in that type of content and I'll see you next week.